In this video, I'm going to show you how you can rig this 3D robotic arm. I will show you some tricks and methods how we can make the rigging easier. Also, I'm going to show you how to prepare the 3D model for rigging. And I'm going to explain this process step by step even if you haven't tried rigging before. So even if you don't know anything about rigging, by the end of this video you will know the basics. So let's go right into it. So as you can see, I have this robotic 3D arm model. And as you can see, the arm is separated into individual components. Now, if you want to, for example, rig a human hand, then it makes sense to make the whole hand as one object. But because I'm using a mechanical arm, then it's much more easier and much more efficient for me to actually have this arm separated into individual components. So before we actually start with the rigging itself, we need to check a few things. The first thing that we need to check is the topology. If I go to edit mode, you can see that all these components have a quadrilateral topology. And this is exactly what you want to use when you are rigging something. And the reason why the topology is a big deal is that when you add your armature you need to think about where the joints will be which means that you need to prepare this area for bending stretching and the general deformation and to make this happen you need a lot of geometry and you need a clean topology because if you don't have a clean topology then you can experience some shading artifacts uneven bending or even glitches which is not what we want and if you have a low poly model you can also apply a subdivision surface modifier which is completely fine but again, you need a quad topology. The second thing that we need to do before we actually start rigging is that we need to apply transforms like the rotation. It is not necessary, but it's a good prevention from unexpected behavior such as distorted deformations or incorrect transformations. So by applying these transforms, we are basically ensuring that the rigging will work properly. And the last thing is that make sure that the 3D model is aligned in one axis. In this case, as you can see, the arm is aligned with the X axis. This is because after we rig this arm, we can use this as a default position and every time you want to change the pose of the arm, you can start from this default pose, which will also make the rigging way faster. Next, you also want to check your normal orientation. In simple words, normal orientation is basically a direction the surface is facing and besides all other things, it defines the exterior and the interior of the 3D model. The blue color represents the exterior side and the red color represents the interior side. So as you can see the normals of this arm are mostly correct but here we can see that some of these parts are facing the incorrect direction so to fix this we will select all these red parts then we will go to the edit mode we will select all faces with ctrl a and we will click shift n and this will basically recalculate the normals. You can see that I have some bad normals here as well. So I'm gonna select the edge loop and again I'm gonna press shift N. Now all the normals are facing the correct direction. And now because we actually prepared this 3D model for rigging, we can actually start with the rigging process. Now in Blender, rigging is usually done with armature that are used to create a rig to control a movement and the deformation of mesh. And I will show you how to use it right now. With Shift A, I'm gonna add a new armature and I'm going to rotate it so it aligns with the arm. I will enable the X-ray so we can see the armature. Now let's select the first point and I will move this point right here because I want the first joints to be right there. And then with E on my keyboard, I'm gonna extrude the armature and I'm gonna move it to the next joint and do it for the last time. So now we have the basic armature and now we have to align it properly with the arm. Now to make the armature working correctly, we need to actually center this point right here. So go back to object mode, select this part, go to edit mode and I'm going to select this edge loop which is directly in the center and with shift s I'm gonna bring the cursor to the selected so the cursor is basically at the center of the sphere. And now I'm going to select the armature, I will go to edit mode, and with shift S, I'm gonna snap this point to the cursor. Now we have this point directly at the center of the sphere, so now let's do the same thing with this point. Again, select this part, go to edit mode, and I'm gonna select these vertices that are at the center, and again with shift S, I'm gonna bring the cursor to the selected. Select the armature, again to the edit mode, and again with shift S, I'm gonna bring the selection to the cursor. And to align this last point, I'm gonna select it. I'm gonna enable snapping to the vertex. And I'm gonna hit G. And I want to align it onto the Z axis, so I'm gonna press Z. And I'm gonna select the center vertex. Now as you can see, we successfully aligned the armature with the center of the arm. But if you take a closer look, the armature is slightly tilted. Which is not what we want. This bone is fine but this one is slightly tilted 
and this one is also slightly tilted. And to fix this, I'm gonna select the bone, I'm gonna press N on my keyboard to open the side panel, and here you can see the tail settings, and besides this Z axis, you want these two to be at zero. So I'm gonna select them, and I'm gonna set them to zero. And as you can see, this actually fixed the tilting. So now I have the simple armature. I have three bones for the arm, but now I actually want to add armature for each finger individually. So again, select the very first segment, go to edit mode, and again, place the 3D cursor exactly where you want the armature to start. So I'm gonna bring the 3D cursor to the center, and again I'm gonna add an armature, now I will rotate it. And again, in edit mode, try to align the points to the joints. So I'm gonna select this object, which is basically the joint. You can see the origin is exactly in the center. So I'm gonna bring the cursor to the origin. Then I will select the bone again, go to edit mode, and snap the top part to the cursor. Extrude it again. And again. And for the last time. Now let's do the same aligning process. Select the next joint. Bring the cursor to the selected, and align the point to the cursor. Do this again, cursor to selected, select the armature, and snap the point to the cursor. And lastly for the tip, select the center edge loop, and again bring the 3D cursor to the selected, and align the last point to the cursor. And now just do the same thing for the rest of the fingers. So I'm gonna start here. I'm gonna bring the cursor to the selected, let's add a new armature, scale it down, rotate it, enable x-ray, and again just roughly align the armature with the joints. And because all these fingers are the same, we can actually bring the cursor here, and we can actually duplicate this armature and snap it to the cursor. And the armature is automatically aligned with the next finger, so again just select, Duplicate it, snap it to the cursor, snap the cursor to the selected, duplicate the armature, and snap it. So now we have bones for each part of the arm. Now after we added the armature for all fingers, I'm gonna select the armatures, I'm gonna go to edit mode, and I'm gonna select the last bones, and with shift D I'm gonna duplicate them, and I will move them away a little bit. So now when we covered the whole arm with bones and with armatures, we can actually parent the arm to the armature, so it actually affects the movement of the arm. So I'm gonna select the main armature, and I'm gonna select the first, second, third and the fourth part of the arm. I will do the fingers separately, so I'm gonna leave them like this. Make sure the armature is active, so with shift S you can select the armature. Now you can parent it with the control and P, and we want to parent it with automatic weights. So click with automatic weights. And now this selection is actually parented to this armature, so if we move the armature, the arm will basically move with it. And if you would like to change the position of the arm, you can go to the pose mode, you can select any bone, and you can rotate it on a certain axis. And as you can see, it will actually rotate the arm, and this way you can actually position the arm as you want. But there are a couple of issues though. You can see that as I am rotating the armature, it not only moves with the hand, but it also distorts the center, which is not what we want. To fix this, I'm gonna go back to the object mode, I'm gonna select all these objects that I parented to the main armature, and then if you go to the modifiers, you will see this preserve volume option. And if you hold out, and you check it, it will actually check this option for all these selected parts together, so we don't have to do this separately for each part. Now if I select the armature and I go to the pose mode and I rotate the same bone, you can see that the issue was resolved and there is no stretching and no shrinking. Also if I select this bone and I rotate it, you can see that the mesh is actually stretching along the joint, which is something that I want to get rid of. And the reason why this is happening is that Blender adds different weights to the object and this weight is basically telling Blender which areas are influenced more and which areas are influenced less with the armature. Also, when I move this bone, you can see that there is a lot of stretching happening on the other side of the joint, which is something that I want to get rid of. And this information is written in the weight. So in order to fix this, we need to tell Blender that this bone will influence only this part and not this part. So if I go to the bone properties, I can see that the name of this bone is bone.001. So now I can go to the object mode, I will select this part that I want to fix, I will go to weight paint, then open the object data properties, 
and then in the vertex groups you need to select this bone right here so we know that this bone is bone 0.001 so we will select this bone and you can see that the reason why the bone is actually distorting this part is because we have weight applied on this area so what we can do is we can hold control and with left click you can actually remove this weight Make sure to do this properly because if you leave some areas, the armature will still have some influence on this part. So now we removed all the weight from this bone, so we can go back to the object mode. Now we can select the armature again, we go to post mode, and as you can see we successfully resolved the issue. So now let's deal with the fingers. I recommend doing all fingers one by one because then you will run again to the issues where the weight is actually influencing more geometry than you want. So now let's rig the fingers the same way. So select the finger with the joints. And then with shift click, you will select the armature. And again with ctrl P, you will parent the finger to the armature with automatic weights. But the reason why I don't have one armature controlling all the fingers together, there is a big chance that the bone right here will also influence the movement of the fingers next to each other. And then we would need to go back again and remove the weights, which is not what we want. So again select the fingers with the joints, then with shift click, select the armature and with ctrl P, parent it with automatic weights. Now do the same thing, select the finger, joints, armature, ctrl P, automatic weights. Again finger, joints, armature, ctrl P, automatic weights. And for the last one do the same thing, select the finger, select the joints and automatic weights. Now if I select any armature and I go to pose mode, now I can influence the fingers as well. But again we have the same issues with the shrinking and deformation of the joints. So what I would recommend is select all these joints while holding shift. This will allow you to select more objects at the same time. And now, now we go to modifiers and again by holding alt and clicking on this button, it will apply this setting to all the joints at the same time. And yeah, you can see everything is working normally. Now we need to join these armatures together. So what we can do is we can select all these finger armatures. And then we can shift select the main one. Then go to the pose mode. And now in pose mode when I select this wrist bone and I move it, you can see that the wrist is moving but, but we need to connect the fingers to the wrist. So we are going to select only the first bones. Then we will select this wrist bone and with ctrl P we will parent the fingers to the bone. And now if I move this wrist bone, we can see that we are moving the whole hand. Now we can move and position the fingers, which is very cool. However, this method is very inefficient and very slow. And for that reason, I added these extra bones at the end. So let's utilize them. Go to pose mode, select the separated bone, then shift select this bone. And now we're gonna use the shortcut shift I and we will add inverse kinematics constraints to the active bone. So now if you select this bone and you move it, you are influencing all the other bones, which means that you can change the position of the finger pretty easily. And to make this work even better, you can go to the bone properties and you can lock the unnecessary axis. So the movement of the finger actually makes more sense. And that's all from me today. Thank you for watching this video. Subscribe to Graffinity for more videos like this. Also check out my new Shade Guard library, which is a pack for Blender that contains 36 procedural materials that you can easily drag and apply to any object and make better renders. And if you have any specific video ideas, you can write them down in the comment section. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.